And then, what happens when the bromine attacks the left-hand carbon? Well, here the bromine, is the bromine going to come in from above or below? The second bromine going to come in from above or below? Below. Yeah, why below? Because the top is sterically Yeah, the top is sterically hindered. By the way, do these two pictures make sense? You guys see where I got these? Yeah. Okay. Now, if the bromine comes in from the left, I would put it here. Now, what's going to happen to this bromine? Well, this bromine is going to then relax to this position. The bromine didn't want to be pulled all the way to the left over here. The only reason it's over here is to form this ring. The bromine now is going to relax to this position. And the propyl and the methyl stay on the wedge and the dash the way they were before. For me, this is the, definitely the most reliable way to get the stereochemistry right here. So we have a nice tetrahedral carbon over here. And then we can say what happens when the bromine attacks the right-hand carbon. So notice how I'm starting with this basic two-carbon chain. Now, if the bromine attends up on the right-hand side, the bromine would be here on the right-hand side, and it would just push the propyl and the methyl group up, but they would still remain on the wedge and the dash the way they were before. So it doesn't matter that we're not showing the bromine and each bromine on the wedge and dash, dash as long as we show the substituents on a dash and wedge? Well, in fact, if you show, once you've shown one wedge and one dash, you want the other two things to be on straight lines. So if I decide to put the propyl and the methyl on the wedge and the dash, the bromine has to be in the plane of the page. We should do that first, make the substituents. Yeah, so basically what you guys were probably doing is you were probably putting these guys in the plane of the page, and you were putting the bromines on the wedges and the dashes. But that actually, I find, is a more, much more confusing way to work out the stereochemistry here. Instead, I would recommend put the substituents on the alkene, on a wedge and a dash, and then the bromines should be in the plane of the page. So I'm not saying these are the only right ways to write the, the answers, but for me these are by far the least confusing ways. So I think the best way to do this is to keep the bromines in the plane of the page. This is for non-cyclic alkenes. For a cyclic alkene, I wouldn't do it this way, but for a non-cyclic alkene, it's best to put the substituents on the wedge and the dash here. And those two are the same thing. Are they? So I think you're thinking about rotating the bromine to point up? No, but then it'll become a dash. But if you rotated the bromine to point up, the propyl would go from oh, a wedge to I a thought dash. that didn't matter since the methyl and propyl were wedged and dashed in both. Well, like the methyl is dashed in both and the propyl is wedged in both, so I didn't think... But in this case, the methyl is pointing down, and in this case, the methyl is pointing up. I, I didn't think yeah. that matters. So what we want to ask is, there can we rotate here so this picture looks identical to this one? We want to ask if we can rotate so the two pictures look identical, and we can't. If we rotated the bromine so that it was pointing up, then the methyl and the propyl would not be identical in the two pictures. Because um, if you rotate this bromine so it's pointing up, then the methyl would be on the wedge. Whereas in this picture, the methyl so is on the dash. So can you draw it? I drew it the other way, like on that top one. Mm -hmm. My bromine was up, and the, okay, like this. Oh, actually, that is the same thing. Yeah, that exactly matches what happened more. Except, you probably would lose credit for this, because these should both be pointing up. Since the bromine came in from below, these both should be pointing up. You had your wedge kind of pointing down over here, which is actually incorrect geometry. The TAs can be picky about that. So the correct geometry is the bromine comes in from below, the other two substituents should both be pointing up. All right, so yeah, getting the stereochemistry here is tricky. I think the best approach for a non-cyclic alkene is to draw the substituents on wedges and dashes, and then the bromines will end up in the plane of the page. Uh, in fact, the way I have this on the board is what I think is definitely the best approach. It helps to use abbreviations for the methyl and the propyl groups here so we don't get tired of writing everything out. This is a very important reaction, so it's important to mark this and go back and do it again. Okay, are we done with that part? Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. So now it's Steve. Sounds good.
So again, I would redraw this molecule like this. And we can use the abbreviations ME for the methyl groups and PR for the propyl groups. Is that the same thing as drawing it like this? Cause yeah, this can't be right because now everything is in the plane of the page. Well, Notice how all the bonds here are in the plane of the page. Yeah, you could do that. I think, but however, it's hard for me then to figure out what the final product is. Uh, if you draw the bromine uh, on a wedge or a dash, it's difficult for me at least to see what the final product is going to look like. For me, it's much easier to put the substituents on the wedges and the dashes, and then the bromine will be in the plane of the page. carbon, there should be one thing pointing away from you and one thing pointing towards you. And then like the propyl? The propyl here can either be pointing towards you or away from you, because if it's pointing towards you here, you could flip it so it's pointing away from you. Uh, somehow, somehow this looked more like it was pointing towards me, so that's how I drew it, but you can draw it either way. Probably would have been best to show the bromine coming in from below, just so that you have better intuition of what's happening there. Mm -hmm. This makes it seem like the second bromine is coming in from above. I'm drawing the arrow from the top and not from the bottom. Yeah. I was just saying, when you show the second bromine coming in, it's better to show it coming in from below, since we put the first bromine above. That's the anti-addition aspect. So again. Um, I know a lot of people would generally here put the bromine on the wedge or the dash, but I find that it's much better to put the substituents on the wedges and the dashes and put the bromines in the plane of the page. So if the bromine attacks on the right, we should have one bromine on the right pointing down and the left pointing up, but they should both be in the plane of the page. And then we'll put the substituents on the wedges and dashes. second bromine comes in from the left, it would be down here, and that would push the other two substituents up. Remember, you're still trying to draw these all as tetrahedral, and then this bromine on top would relax to over here, where it wanted to be all along, and this propyl group would be down here. It doesn't really matter whether you draw this accurately, because it didn't turn out to be a stereocenter, so this was just a practice. But this is a stereocenter, so you do have to draw it accurately. So these are not the same compound. Um, these are enantiomers of each other. If we tried to rotate the bromine to point up, then this propyl would be on the dash. So these are enantiomers of each other. Thank you. Okay, so again, for non-cyclic alkenes, my preferred method is to draw the substituents on wedges and dashes. 
and then we draw the halogens in the plane of the page.